in this age of mass layoffs, insane entry-level competition, and with the rise of AI, you might be wondering if learning to code is even worth it. In today's video, I will give you the three main reasons why learning to code might still be the best decision you will ever make. Let's get straight into it with reason number one, which is financial independence. Obviously, software engineering is one of the highest paying fields in the world. I mean, it's probably the reason why you're watching this video. In the United States, software engineers can expect a median salary of around $120,000 to $170,000 every single year. If you manage to join a FANG company, your compensation will go even crazier. If you're not familiar with FANG, it's an acronym representing the five most prestigious tech companies. So Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. At the entry level, FANG engineers can expect to make around $200,000 while more senior engineers can expect to make between $300,000 to $500,000 every single year, which is an absurd amount of money. While doctors and lawyers might make more money, their education is also a lot longer, and they might work up to 80-hour work weeks, which is simply not healthy and sustainable. On the other hand, software engineering probably has the highest effort-to-reward ratio in any type of career. First, most of the engineers only have a bachelor's degree and the rest of them might be bootcamp graduates or self-taught. Of course, if you want to make six figures, you have to land a high-paying job, and that requires a good amount of technical preparation. But that is no different from the doctors who have to get accepted into med school, or from the lawyers who have to pass their bar exam. Once you land your dream position, you are probably going to be paid handsomely to work from 9 to 5 in a pretty low-stress environment. You might think that higher pay equals more hours, but that is really not the case in tech. In fact, quite often you will work longer hours for lower pay in smaller companies like startups, compared to big companies which provide better work-life balance and better benefits. But the main reason why I chose coding over other high-paying fields like medicine or law is the freedom it provides. Because to become a software engineer, you really only need two things, a computer and an internet connection. This gives you the freedom to work from anywhere in the world, be it at home in your pajamas or on a beach in Thailand. Of course, if you're working for someone, it's not as easy as just taking your laptop and moving to another country. You would need approvals from your company, but it's totally doable. If you ever browse through digital nomads forums, you will notice that a lot of them are software engineers. In addition, you're not only location independent, but often also time independent. In fact, a lot of companies offer flexible hours, so you're not required to work exactly from 9 to 5. You could do something like 10 to 6 or even 7 to 3 if you're an early bird like me. Your output is not directly measured by the number of hours you put in, but rather by the efficiency of your work. The work hours really don't matter as much, as long as you get your work done. Some weeks you might do a little bit more, and other weeks you might do a little bit less. It's quite flexible in that sense. You do not only have time and location freedom, you've also got the freedom to choose the path you want to take. This is something that I discussed in this video where I discussed the best ways to use coding to make millions. In the world of programming, there are many many paths you can take. The employee route, which is the path that 99% of people are taking, it's the easiest path by far. But it can also be very lucrative if you manage to land a job in a big tech company. You can also go the self-employed and freelancer route, which is a bit harder to start with, but once you get some clients and you build relationships, you will become the master of your own schedule. You get to decide which clients you're taking on and at what price. Finally, you can take the riskiest but also the most fulfilling path, which is building your own startup. If you've got an idea, coding gives you the freedom to build it. As Naval Ravikant says, content and code are the biggest levers you can pull to build financial freedom. Because one line of code can impact millions of people in a way that nothing else really can. Don't get me wrong, going into software engineering for the money or the freedom it provides is an absolutely valid reason. But I also think you should have a love and curiosity for the art of coding. Motivation comes and goes, but if you genuinely enjoy coding, you will have a long and successful career as a software developer. Programming is one of the only activities that can get me into a state of flow, which is why I enjoy it so much. Flow occurs when the level of a challenge is a bit higher than your current level, but not too much. For example, if the challenge is too easy, you will get bored. 
But if the challenge is too difficult, you will get discouraged. In coding, no matter your skill level, you can always find something to challenge you. This state of flow is quite hard to access. But once you do, it's absolute bliss and happiness. You are so productive and focused that time flies by without you even seeing it. Funny enough, I find the programming assignments in school to be a good way to access a flow state. Because the problems are often not too easy, which would get you bored, but also not impossible to solve. I remember vividly starting a school assignment. I was completing each of the sub problems one by one without getting distracted. I finished pretty quickly. But then I looked up at the clock and I saw that I had been working on this assignment for 5 hours straight without any breaks, without any distraction. I thought that I spent at most an hour or two, but 5 hours flew by in the space of a blink. That is the best example that I can give you of a flow state. If you've experienced it before, you'll know what I'm talking about. Depending on the task you have, you can also get into a flow state at work. You know, you spend some time focusing on a problem, and then BAM! It's already lunchtime and the day is almost over. You might not want to be an employee, which I understand. But honestly, the 40 hour work weeks in coding aren't that bad, especially if you like the coding part. Programming is also a skill that you can master over time by building a craftsmanship mentality. Software engineering is a great career for the builders and the makers of this world, because the only limit is your imagination. If you want a book on the art of mastery, check out Mastery by Robert Greene. It's a great book. One key insight I got from the book is that when you're searching for your passion or your purpose in life, take a look at what you enjoyed doing when you were young. For example, like a lot of kids, I enjoyed building Legos, building my own little projects with construction paper, but I especially enjoyed tinkering with computers. So software engineering was clearly on my mind when it was time to choose a university major because it mixes my enjoyment of building and creating stuff with my passion for computers. You should ask yourself if coding and problem solving is something that you could do for the rest of your life. Because nowadays careers are very long and you don't want to be stuck doing something that you hate every single day. So pause the video right now, think about coding and decide if it's the right path for you. If it is, welcome to the club. Choosing to learn to code might genuinely be the best decision you will ever make in your life. It can lead you to financial independence, it gives you time and location freedom, and it allows you to adopt a craftsmanship mentality. If you want to learn to code but you have no idea where to start, check out this video where I give you the complete roadmap to go from zero to hero in the world of web development. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.